We are at 10.02, so I think we call a meeting to order if, um, uh, if everyone's ready. Um, uh, Stephanie, you want to take a roll call? I think I'm here. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> done. We can see you and hear you. <laughs> All right. Mr. Stovall? Here. And Dr. Na? Mr. Neptune? Here. Nancy's here. here. Through the chair, we do have a quorum. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, uh, first item on the agenda is the consent calendar. Um, I guess uh, anyone like to remove anything from the consent calendar? If not, uh, do we have a motion on the consent calendar? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, motion by Mr. Neptune. Second. Uh, looks like we might have lost Miss Dunn. Yes, we did. Um, maybe we can wait a second to see if she jumps back on. Yeah, see if she gets back on. Is Jesse going to be with us uh, today, Jim? I think I might try to give Miss Dunn a, a call to see if she's having. Some yeah, that would be a good, a good idea. And we had a quorum I think she when might we be started. Calling. No one's asked for a quorum call, but <laughs> it's not sure it uh, would be great if we proceeded without her. There we go. Wait for Stephanie to get back here. Did I unzip it? Um, I, yeah, you're you're okay. We got you. You mean you got me finally? I've been I got trying. You. I've been on. It. I've been on for fifteen minutes. 
Oh, really? I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't either. We lost okay, her. I'll hang up now, Stephanie. Bye. Sorry. I've been trying. That's that's okay. We know. We know. Okay. All right. So we have a, a, a motion uh, by uh, Blaine on the um, consent calendar. Uh, would you like to second that? Is this, the, this is the Chevron, right? Uh, no, this is the consent calendar. Oh, all right. Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Stephanie, you want to take the roll? Ms. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Stovall? Yes. Mr. Neptune? Yes. Through the chair, motion passes. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Okay, well, let's, um, let's go then to the uh, uh, public hearing. Uh, will all those who uh, will be testifying at the public hearing please uh, raise your right hand and uh, uh, listen to the following oath, which I'll ask you to uh, swear or affirm. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you will give in the matters before this board shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, okay. Is there any objection to that? Okay. Uh, so uh, everyone having been sworn in, let's go to uh, S2214S, Chevron USA, Inc., uh, Bakersfield, California. Uh, and uh, Shannon, is that yours? Or? Uh, yes, it is. And on behalf of the petitioner, we have, um, Gordy, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I am Guillermo Gordy Guillen. I'm with uh, Chevron, and uh, Shannon will be uh, giving the summary today for us. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shannon Moore. I'm an air quality specialist here at the district. Before you this morning is Chevron USA Incorporated. They have permits to operate thermally enhanced oil recovery equipment at the 31X oil cleaning plant within the Simric oil field in McKittrick, California. Produced oil and water from nearby wells is sent to the 31X oil cleaning plant where the facility utilizes a series of tanks to process, store, and ship crude oil. A well casing collection system and a tank vapor recovery system are used to capture vapors that are created from the process. District rules and the facility permit conditions require the vapor recovery system to always be functional and operating and to be maintained in a leak-free condition at all times. Chevron needs to repair a broken insulator on the 12 kilovolt electric line that supplies power to the 31X oil cleaning plant. In order to complete the project, Chevron needs to shut down power at the facility, including the vape recovery system. Therefore, Chevron is seeking a variance from requirements of the applicable district rules and permit conditions to allow tanks at the 31X oil cleaning plant to operate without a functional vapor recovery system and to allow wells with closed casing vents to produce into tanks that do not have a functional or operating vapor recovery system. Chevron has requested a non-consecutive 24-hour variance period due to the nature of the repair and the possibility they may need to shut down and restart the vapor recovery system more than once to complete the job. The requested variance period will occur between September 20th, 2022 and October 20th, 2022 inclusive. If granted, the variance would allow Chevron to continue to store VOC containing liquids in the subject tanks and allow wells with closed casing vents to produce into those tanks without a functional or operating vapor recovery system. Chevron has estimated that uncontrolled VOC emissions from the tanks will be no more than 22 pounds over the duration of the variance. The district has reviewed the calculated emissions and determined they are complete and acceptable for the purposes of the variance. The district believes the required findings as set forth in the California Health and Safety Code can be made and recommends that Chevron USA Incorporated be granted a short variance with the conditions on pages four, five, and six. And that concludes the district's presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Shannon. And just, uh, just to confirm, um, we find it here, if the... Uh, uh, if the variants weren't granted, it would cost Chevron approximately $2.375 million per day. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Any other questions uh, for Shannon? Or any other questions for Shannon? Okay. Uh, are we backdating to uh, September 20th? That was the original variance period when we had, we're going to have the hearing last 
week. Right. I don't think it's going to make a difference because they obviously okay. haven't started yet and they'll conclude before the 20th. So it should be fine. Yes. So September 20th then October 20th, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Any further questions for Shannon? Okay. If not, uh, Gordy, uh, you, you have the floor if you'd like to add anything. Um, thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. That was a very thorough and detailed summary. Um, I have nothing else to add. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Shannon? Okay. If not, um, we'll go ahead and close. Well, is there any public comment? You're not hearing any. There, I do not see any ind indication of public comment. Okay. Uh, with that, then we will go ahead and close the hearing and uh, see if we have a motion. I sure I'll do it. Um, I move to approve the short variant set forth in docket number S 22 14 S to Chevron USA Incorporated, right? Yes. This motion includes the required six findings of the Health and Safety Code, pages two, three, four, adopted by reference as set forth in this staff report. This variant shall be effective for a non consecutive 24 hour period to occur between September 20th and October 20th, 2022, inclusive or until Chevron has completed the proposed work and returned the VRS to compliance operation, whichever one of those occurs first. Okay, thank you, uh, Nancy. Um, so I have a motion by Ms. Dunn. Do we have a second? Uh, yeah, I'll second it. Uh, second by Mr. Neptune. Uh, Stephanie, to take the roll. Ms. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Sobel? Yes. Mr. Neptune? Yes. Through the chair, motion passes. Okay, thank you. So the variance is granted. Um, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, let's go then to um, second item on the adjust and on the agenda: current oil and refining company S twenty two fifteen S. And um, I'm guessing that maybe that's yours, Asala. No. Okay. So. Oh, Chris. I'm, I'm Chris Kalash. Yeah, Estella right, is good. in court today with Clay Bishop. They're doing some work there on behalf of the district. So I'm going to be presenting uh, for Estella today. I'm sorry, I, I didn't see I didn't see you on the screen there. So. <laughs> no, ahead. that's fine. Um, okay. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Chris Kalash. I'm air quality specialist here with the district. Uh, before you this morning is Kern Oil and Refining Company. I'll refer to them as KOR um, through the remainder of this presentation. Uh, they operate a petroleum refining operation that requires a complex network of tanks to store feedstock, intermediate products, and finished fuels. KOR controls or VOC emissions through a closed vent vapor recovery system or VRS that consists of compressors and a complex network of piping. Uh, the system is required by district permit to be operational at all times. KOR uh, plans to conduct maintenance repairs to equipment over a 36 hour period, utilizing manpower for around the clock work in an effort to mitigate excess emissions, minimize refinery downtime, and meet KOR's contractual obligations for supplying product to customers. For this work to be uh, conducted, the vapor recovery system must be taken offline and they have requested a short variance from the applicable, applicable requirements district rules in addition to the applicable conditions of the subject permits. And this requested variance period they're requesting would be for non-consecutive 36 hour period. And this will occur sometime between September 22nd, 2022 and November 27th, 2022 inclusive. In the staff reports that you all received, I am assuming that you have the previous version Right. And it has dates of September 15th through November 20th. Right. And so that's going to be changing. So on page two, the new date, like I said, they're asking for this period to occur sometime between September 22nd, 2022 and November 27th, 2022. So that's going to be changed on page two, which is in their formal request. And page four, where... It talks about the recommendations. It has condition one. And because those dates change on the sixth page for condition number eight, 
It should say on yours, December 5th is when their uh, variant summary report is due. That date will now be changed to December 12th, 2022. So I just wanted to make you all aware of that before I continue on. If this variant uh, is granted, um, it's gonna allow for KOR to store VOC containing liquids in the subject storage tanks with a, without an operating or functional VRS while this maintenance repair work is performed. Uh, in, your staff, in the staff report, the work that's outlined in there, which is considerable, um, the scope of that has not changed as a result of these dates being changed. Uh, in lieu of obtaining a variance, KOR could remain in compliance by draining to gas and cleaning the subject tanks. Uh, requiring this would result in more emissions than are what are going to be proposed under this variance. Uh, by allowing KOR to focus manpower and resources on the proposed work. Uh, furthermore, the process of degassing and cleaning the tanks would result in additional refinery downtime and affect their ability to meet contractual obligations for supplying product to customers. I know, Mr. Stovall, that you had asked the previous petitioner or the presenter regarding the financial impact burden. I do not see that specifically uh, stated in this. So if you wanna know more about that, I would wait until I finish this to ask the petitioner. I, I don't have that information with me. Okay, that's fine. Uh, KOR has estimated that excess VOC emissions may be as high as 206 pounds uh, during the variance period. And the district believes uh, the required findings set forth in the California Health and Safety Code can be made and is recommending that KOR be granted a short variance with the conditions on pages four, five, and six including the changes on pages two, four, and six. And this concludes the district's presentation. Okay, any any questions for uh, Chris? Okay, uh, without that, then um, I guess uh, we'll go to Mr. Nielsen. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to add to that, uh, uh, David? Uh, no, uh, staff did a really good job of explaining everything. Uh, the only other uh, change I would see to the uh, staff report was, um, I mentioned this to uh, Estella several weeks ago, is that on page two, uh, under the excess emissions, uh, in that very first paragraph, there is a, uh, it looks like a topographical error because it says 108 pounds of emissions. And I think it's supposed to be 206. Uh, so she, as I was talking to her, she asked that I correct that by mentioning this during the, the, uh, the meeting. You know what? Let me let me see if that's been, because in the one that I'm looking at, that is the, the recent one. It okay. still shows the 108. Um, let me go in on my end while, while I have you on here. And get that to change. Just bear with me for a second here. I just want to make sure that. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Okay, I'm going down to page. No, I'm going to make that change right now. Okay. It's been changed and I've made the same change. Um, and and this and it should be noted that with my closing statement about the changes on the different on the various pages, this page is one of those that was included in that anyways. So that it's page two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank thank you, Chris. Um, uh, David, just got a couple of questions. And I, I guess my first um, uh, question, and I should explain why I asked this question. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to uh, just say that uh, it would be unreasonable, but we're trying to develop a record that would actually support that if anybody ever challenged it. So uh, the, that's the reason I ask. Um, do we have a, a, you know, a good faith estimate of what it would actually cost if you had to shut down the project uh, for the time necessary for this repair? Uh, we're not getting any sound from any you. Any sound. Try again. 
Uh oh. <laughs> um, maybe the chat would work if they want to uh -oh. give it to us. Oh, now we got a little sound there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? Sounds like a <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, No, we don't have a very good estimate as to what it would turn around and cost. Um, this variance is very similar to one we did about a year and a half ago. And um, and I don't know that we estimated or did a very good job of estimating those costs back then either. So, um, okay. well, let me just ask another question. Um, is it true that the costs will be, say, more than $100,000? Most yeah. definitely. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that's, all. I just wanted some factual thing in the record to support our conclusion if we make it. So. Yeah, it would be very time consuming effort because uh, we're going to have several tanks or quite a few tanks that we'd end up shutting down. And as Mr. Kalashian mentioned, you know, those are either product or intermediate product tanks. And what it would actually do is shut down the refinery process. Uh, so we'd actually have to shut down the refinery to probably be able to, to clean those tanks out to do it without a variance. That's what becomes very difficult in calculating the cost. So this could be millions of dollars. Okay. Um, could, could I real quickly through the chair? I just had one last quick question for Mr. Nielsen. Before we even started this whole hearing board, did I hear you correct in saying that you had sent Estella an email with all the names of the participants? Uh, that's correct. Okay, good. So she'll have it for her decision order. Okay, I just wanted to verify that I don't have to get any additional information for her. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sounds uh, sounds sounds good. Any uh, further questions for uh, Mr. Nielsen or his group? Okay. Hearing none. Um, do we have any public comment? Through to the chair, we do not have any more members of the public present. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, so we'll go ahead and close the hearing um, and uh, see if we have a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Neptune. I'll let him go ahead and do that. I move to approve uh, Colonel Refinings, Refinery's petition for a short variance uh, set forth in docket uh, S2215S with the required six findings of the health and safety code adopted by reference as set forth in the staff report. The variance shall be for a 36 hour non consecutive period between September 22nd and November 27th, 2022, or until the emission control devices are returned to a compliant operation, whichever occurs first, and shall be subject to the conditions on pages four to six of the staff report. Uh, as amended, I presume. Uh, as amended, yes. <laughs> okay. okay, do we have a second? Um... I'll second that one. Okay, a motion by Mr. Neptune, second by Ms. Dunn. Uh, Stephanie, did you take the roll? Mr. Stovall? Yes. Ms. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Neptune? Yes. Due to the chair, motion passes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Nesson and uh, Chris. And Chris, thanks for stepping in there. I appreciate that. Uh, okay. Well, with that, uh, Let's go to the rest of the uh, uh, calendar then here where the time has come for uh, general public comments. So, so I'll go ahead and read the uh, required statement. Uh, this time is made available for comments from the public on matters within the board's jurisdiction that are not on the agenda. It's requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The public uh, has uh, had the opportunity to make comments after each board agenda item uh, during the time allowed for public comment. Additionally, uh, state law prohibits the hearing board from acting on matters that are not on this agenda. Uh, do we have any uh, public comments? Through to the chair, we still do not have any members of the public present. Okay, thank you, thank you, Stephanie. Um, uh, hearing board member comments. Uh, not hearing any. I, I see Nancy shaking her head. So 
<laughs> uh, just no. uh, again, a uh, uh, great job by the staff. Appreciate it. Um, and um, with that, then uh, I guess uh, uh, just remind you that um, uh, our next hearing is on October 12th of 2022. And um, uh, if there's nothing further, uh, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting uh, without any objections. Okay. Meeting is adjourned.